Hey there, it's Dr. Dave here again with another LS tutorial. In today's tutorial I want to use functions to accurately measure the distance between two objects. So in this particular scenario, what I'm going to do is get this, this chair to move towards the book bookcase. When it hits the bookcase, rebound back. While the chair is moving I'll get it to spin. Uh, after the, the bookcase has been hit I'll get it to sort of wobble slightly. Now the point is in Alice, of course, there's no collision detection and so forth, so we need to engineer all that kind of stuff ourselves. So we need to know exactly when these two are within proximity of each other. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance between the chair here and the bookcase. So let's start off. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the chair and I'm going to get that to move towards and I want to move towards and for now I'll just put one meter move one meter towards the bookcase now what I could do is I could go in and, and fire a series of guesswork sort of gradually change this amount and eventually I'll, I'll come across something that's reasonably accurate but that's not a particularly effective way of doing it. What I want to really do is, is measure the distance accurately. So first thing I want to do here is use this function here, distance to. So I can do the amount is the distance to the bookcase. Let's just see what happens when we do that. Okay, so what we notice here is that it disappears slightly into the bookcase. Now the reason for that is what it's doing is it's measuring the distance from the middle of the chair to the middle of the bookcase whereas really what I want to do is measure the distance from the edge of the bookcase to the edge of the chair so I've got to make a slight adjustment here now before I do that what I'm going to do here rather than just adjusting it all here I'm going to add a new variable I'm going to call it distance now the reason I'm doing this is one it makes the, the, the code simpler and easier to read but secondly, by doing this complicated calculation here, I can then reuse it later in the code. I don't have to re redo the whole code again. So I'm going to drag this down here. Now I'll just set it to an initial value of 1. I'll copy this over to here and drag that into there. And then what I want to do is, as I said, I want to measure the distance from the outer edge of the chair to the outer edge of the bookcase. So I need to do a little bit of subtraction here. So from here I'll su we'll subtract. I'll just put in a default value now. We'll start off by subtracting half of the depth of the bookcase. So we'll put in the bookcase's depth and we'll divide that by 2. So divide by And we also want to subtract half of the depth of the chair. So we'll go back to our chair here and do the lab chair's depth and then divide that by two. Should be all done. We've got to be a little bit careful here, make sure we've got the brackets in the right place and so forth, but I think we should be okay here. So now what I can do is I can replace this by the distance. And as I said, because we've done this calculation here, set it to a local variable, I can re then reuse that value later on, which we'll see later. So let's play that. And we'll notice the, the chair is no longer disappearing into the bookcase. We've got a pretty good match there. Now, what I want to do is, while the chair is actually moving towards I want it to get it to the upper half of the chair to spin as well. So I need to do together, and we're going to get the, in this case it's going to be the bottom bar, and we're going to get the bottom bar to turn to the right or left, it doesn't really matter, and we'll get it to do it two revolutions. So again, let's see what happens when we play that. Okay, much better looking effect. So let's close that. Now what we want to do is get the chair, when it 
moves all the way across there to then rebound. So again we're going to need a do together and we can copy some of this so we'll copy that and copy that and let's put in the distance but because it's hitting the bookcase let's assume that it doesn't go quite as far back so we'll multiply that by 0.75 so let's just say it comes back to 75% of the distance and we'll play that oops of course I need to get it to I need to change that to uh, oops undo that I actually need to move move away so I'll put that in there instead We'll get it to move away from again we need to times that multiply that by 0.75 and let's delete that one that should be a bit better and we're making some good errors here let's just do the entire chair see if we get this right finally oh, there we go that's better and the final thing we want to do there is to get the bookcase to do a bit of a wobble as well so it moves back and forth slightly so to do that I'm going to do a do an order and I'm going to get the let's go up to the bookcase and I'm going to get it to turn and it's going to turn backwards and I'll just put in a small amount so some numbers I looked at earlier they seem to work out okay 0.04 of a revolution and let's copy that another copy then we'll get it to turn forward and we'll change that to 0.08 and then turn backwards 0.08 let's just quickly play that we'll, well no I might change it now as well we need to change the timing so it matches up so this is going to take each of these steps is taking one second so let's modify this so this takes a second overall as well so to do that we'll change that to a quarter of a second we'll make that one half a second and we'll make that one one quarter of a second as well so let's play that see see how we go excellent so we can see let's just play it again that's pretty good we can play around with the styles here a bit so we'll change those to abruptly and that's generally what you're going to use in a lot of your examples is using the, the abruptly style uh, and we'll change the movement to abruptly as well and we'll change this one to abrupt movement let's just finally play that now that's looking pretty good so we've used some functions here to get an accurate idea of the distances. So I think you, you know, certainly encourage you to use that in your code. I've used a variable and that allows me to then reuse all these calculations later in my code without having to repeat all of this uh, large amounts of detail. And you notice here I've also been able to use the variable with slight modification as well. Alrighty, hopefully you found that that useful. And uh, hope you'll join me for my next tutorial.